Welcome back to Montana this morning. The time is 643 on this Tuesday, 21 degrees in Billings right now. And I'll tell you when I was heading into work this morning, it was warmer than that. So that trend is holding true. Miller will tell you all about it and how the temperature is just going to keep dropping, dropping, dropping throughout the day. Let's go ahead and jump into news. Millions of children will soon be eligible for a COVID-19 booster shot. It comes as cases and hospitalizations are skyrocketing across the country. The latest numbers from Johns Hopkins shows that the U.S. reported more than 1 million cases yesterday for the first time ever. More than 1,600 Americans died yesterday. CBS's Laura Podesta is on Capitol Hill with the details. The Food and Drug Administration authorized Pfizer's COVID booster shots for children 12 to 15 years old yesterday. Also eligible, 5 to 11 year olds who are immunocompromised. The CDC is expected to give the final sign off on Wednesday. It probably gives me more immunity from the virus. The extra dose will help keep 12 year old Abishal Kochal safe around his classmates. He has asthma and autoimmune disease called alopecia and um, having a booster uh, can prevent uh, him and getting another disease. The seventh grader got a COVID test before returning to school in San Jose, California. So it's good to know who doesn't and who hasn't. Down in Texas, more than a third of all tests are positive as residents wait in line for hours just to get swabbed. I spent two days trying to find a place. In New York, hospitalizations are above 9,500, surpassing the all-time high from last March. We're not in a good place. I'm going to be really honest with you. This is the winter surge we predicted. Here in the nation's capital, lawmakers and their staffs are being urged to work remotely. Congress's attending physician says about two thirds of all cases here are symptomatic. We're talking about that later. And when will Americans get those free COVID tests, sir? Today, President Biden meets with the White House COVID response team. Then he's scheduled to update the American people. Laura Podesta, CBS News, Washington. The attending physician on Capitol Hill says he expects the daily case rate to increase even more substantially in the coming weeks. Now here in Billings, residents flock to claim free at-home testing kits from Riverstone Health. Monday was the first time tests were given away and as Q2's Casey Conlon found out, they got an overwhelming response. Riverstone Health said they'd be giving out kits right here at their clinic starting at 11 a.m. By 10.30, there was already a line of cars and people waiting. By 11.15, the 800 kits in supply were completely gone. Four, five, thank you. I need four, and then could I get five for my son? Is that one household? It's a uh, three. Okay. I expected it to be uh, busy. I had no clue that it was going to be that busy. I mean, we could have probably given away five times that amount. The rise in cases has led to a huge demand for tests. Here in Billings, people could pick up one test per person in their household, and many said they were picking up for multiple households. Elderly neighbor who asked me to do this. The Binax Now test is one of the most popular in the country, minimally invasive, just an inch into each nostril, and you get results in 15 minutes. Anna Marie Reichert got in line early because of a concern at home. My husband's a trucker, so he's all over the United States and it's kind of worrisome to know. Um, he's only been home a few days and he's not feeling very well, so. The entire family was unvaccinated until late summer when the virus took a loved one. We had a um, COVID death in the family in August. Unfortunately, in Florida, we lost our mother-in-law, Melita Reichert, and um, it prompted us to get vaccinated, all of us. Reichert's kids are homeschooled. In School District 2, a visit to their website pops up this message, stating they still plan to go ahead to an optional masking policy in two weeks on January 17th. The Omicron surge could have teachers and parents looking for more tests, but like many things these days, supply is low. We got half of what we ordered, uh, and then we contacted the state and ordered more. They are out. Remember that there's 56 counties, and they're all, uh, asking for the same things that we're asking for, but we'll probably try to double or triple the, the number that we order. We are all totally out. I am so sorry. Um, we're trying to get more as we speak. We'll update you on any new stock as soon as Riverstone gets it. Casey Conlon, MTN News. And there was also a crowd in the Billings City Council chambers last night as newly elected representatives took their oath. Q2's Mitch Laggy was there. 
protect, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. And defend the Constitution of the United States. The United States. The United States. The United A moment some of these people have been waiting on for weeks. The Billings City Council welcomed three new members and welcomed back two familiar faces at its first meeting of 2022. Newly elected Ward 2 representative in the Heights, Jennifer Owen, said she's ready to get to work. It's exciting. I'm nervous. Um, I, you know, I'm a longtime Heights resident. That's my home. And I really believe in what we can do for that neighborhood. So I'm excited to get to work. It's been a long year to get here, a, a tough campaign, and so tonight feels really just very exciting. Another new addition is Daniel Tidswell from Ward 4 underneath the Billings Rim Rocks, who said he shared a similar anticipation. I really want to go with what I, I, I started to understand by visiting the folks in Ward 4. A lot of that was taxes, um, and, and, and another thing that came up was a lot was recycling which was kind of surprising, but I would like to just lay my finger on that and see where we can go with it, see where we are with it, and maybe we can send some things forward there. Tidswell and Owen took the oath, along with new members Tom Rupsis of Ward 5 and Ed Gulick of Ward 1. The incumbent in Ward 3, Denise Joy, took the oath as well on Monday, along with Mayor Bill Cole, who's now on his second term. The council has some big topics to tackle in the coming years, like moving house into the Stillwater building, which will serve as new city hall, legalized marijuana, and the ever-present issue of public safety. I mean, these are the things we deal with every day. It's how does traffic flow? Is there a pothole? Is my trash getting picked up? Is there enough water for our city? Is the sewer system stable? Do I have parks where I can play in? Is it a safe community? So this is the government that touches our lives the most. And I think it's really important that we have good leaders who are committed to making Billings everything that it could be. Both of the city council members I spoke with told me that they wished more people would get involved in their local government. A good way to contact your council member is by email, and all of those can be found on the city's website. Council meetings happen every Monday at 5.30 p.m. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. And turning our attention to national headlines now, the White House plans to provide $1 billion to independent meat and poultry farmers. The announcement was made yesterday when President Joe Biden met with farmers, ranchers, and independent meat processors from across the country. This is an effort to boost competition and lower prices for consumers. According to the White House, 85% of the beef market is controlled by four large meat packing companies. The $1 billion includes grants for processing plant projects, workforce training, technical assistance and research as well as efforts to reduce inspection costs. The funding would come from the American Rescue Plan. New York Attorney General Leticia James has subpoenaed Donald Trump Jr. and his sister Ivanka Trump. Her office is conducting a civil investigation into former President Donald Trump's business practices. The Trump children have refused to comply with the subpoenas as has their father, but their brother Eric sat for questioning in October of 2020. A man and woman from Sheridan, Wyoming, are behind bars accused of kidnapping and murdering a woman in Colorado. 43-year-old Chantel Edend and 23-year-old Leo Van Buskirk are charged with first-degree murder and kidnapping. The pair was arrested in Sheridan last Wednesday along with a third suspect, 39-year-old Casey Childers of Casper. Police say the trio kidnapped a 29-year-old woman in Aurora, Colorado back on November 6, then shot and killed her and dumped her body along a highway. A possible motive has not not been released. A ground and air search continues for a missing Sydney woman. 26 year old Caitlin Berry vanished on December 21st after leaving her home south of town. Berry's mother is an assistant state attorney in Grand Forks, North Dakota. There is no evidence of foul play, but police say it hasn't been ruled out. Police say Berry's credit cards and cell phones have not been used since her disappearance. MTN's Road to the FCS Championship is sponsored by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management. A contingency plan is in place ahead of this weekend's Cats versus Bison FCS championship game. The plan includes setting the minimum participation numbers for each team to 53 eligible players. If one of the teams fall below that number before arriving on Wednesday, they could choose to not play the game and it would be moved to January 14th but remain in Texas. If one of the schools has to drop out after arriving on Wednesday, the available team would be declared the winner. But if both teams are unable to play, the championship would be vacated. And fingers crossed the game goes on, and when it does, you'll still have a chance to attend. A limited number of standing room only tickets go on sale today. The tickets will get you in the stadium, but no seat. You cannot block the view of seated fans, and the venue staff has to approve your location. The ticket will cost you $75 plus taxes and fees. There to keep spirits high, the MSU Spirit of the West Marching Band. They're just over halfway to their travel fundraising goal of $200,000. They need 
need some help getting to Frisco and hope to reach their goal by Friday. At last check, they're at $107,000. To donate, you can visit the Montana State University Alumni Foundation website. Now back here in Billings, a place to run, a place to play, and a place to hook up to free Wi-Fi. I'm talking about Billings Public Parks. Q2's Alina Howder has the details. There are places people may be avoiding during the COVID-19 pandemic, but our public parks aren't one of them. We like to, you know, just walk around. Public park usage has spiked during the pandemic, a haven for those tired of being cooped up indoors. During the pandemic, people were required to social distance and those kind of things, and you still have to be active and worry about your health. And as our parks have become more than just a place to relax, they're now getting some much needed TLC. We looked at all the parks in Billings and identified the ones that were in low income areas of Billings. North Park, Pioneer Park, Comanche Park, South Park, Optimus Park, Highland Park, Central Park, and Arrowhead Park are getting internet hotspots thanks to federal money in the form of COVID-19 and community development block grants. Low-income community members were having a hard time uh, accessing services or even finding out about services. They didn't have internet access. And in a world that's filled with COVID, that's welcome news. Our parks, a safer alternative to traditional gathering places, and now becoming not just a place to play, but places to work and communicate. The library is awesome too, but a lot of people can't get over there. So I think that'll be great. But I think there is, you know, benefits to it. And uh, if people are wanting to enjoy nature, they can do that without, you know, connecting to Wi-Fi and that's fine and the people that need it then they need it. The funds will be used to improve other parts of the parks as well. At North Park we're hoping to put in an adult exercise area that's adjacent to the playground. Comanche Park will be getting an entirely new playground so kids can play safely. Restroom facilities will be improved with touchless technology such as automatic doors, auto lights, and non-touch water and soap dispensers. Even some of the trails will be improved for accessibility, specifically Virginia Lane down by Zimmerman Center into Pioneer Park. If you've got any kind of mobility challenges, uh, getting down that uh, path is just a real challenge and that's going to be improved as well. Lots of major improvements at a time when our parks are being used now more than ever before. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. All right, there you have it. That's Nice. I mean, mm. if someone needs to access the internet, uh, parks are a peaceful place to do that. You could just take your laptop right over there, sit on a bench and get to work. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, you know, this uh, past summer, the family and I went out and while the kids were playing on the, um, you know, I had to use my data and stuff, but while they were playing, you know, it was nice to sit back underneath the tree and maybe mm -hmm. read yeah. a book or something like that or yeah. get on the internet and whatnot. So, yeah. Okay. Right. A little change right. of scenery always helps. Yeah. Well, speaking of a change of scenery, oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, here we go. That's a good segue there, Victoria. We've got snow on the way. It looks like we've already got some snow falling here in Yellowstone County as we're into this blast of winter weather over the course of the next few days. Snow showers today. Temperatures are falling out there. We've already hit our highs this morning here in Billings. We'll see snow showers tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be our coldest day of the week. Still going to be quite chilly uh, on Thursday, but the temperatures will rebound just a bit and we'll still see some snow that should wrap up maybe by Friday morning. So several rounds of snow coming through. Now, if you don't have the snow out there yet, you can see the clouds across Yellowstone County. We're down to 17 now at Billings. In the last uh, hour, we've dropped like four or five degrees. We're at one is what it feels like. Winds out of the northeast at about 17 miles an hour. Temperatures across the area, Mile City and Glendive tag teaming at 11, round up at nine. We've got uh, 31 though, a little warmer on the western side. 31 in uh, Columbus, we got 28 in Red Lodge, 33 just above the freezing mark in Cody, 29 right now in Livingston. Uh, across the state, Helena sitting at uh, three, uh, minus nine in Great Falls. You can tell where that cold air is already uh, coming in. Minus 15 along the High Line at Cutbank, minus eight in Haver. Uh, we've got two in uh, Glasgow down in Dillon. We're at 25, but look at that. You can see where that cold air is streaming in. Feels like minus 43 at Cutbank. Feels like 29 below in Haver as well as Great Falls, and that's what's heading our way, folks, as that cold air continue, uh, continues to filter in. Now, this is where the windshield advisory officially is. Those areas in powder blue where we can see 35 to 40 below through Thursday, but all of us are going to be very cold. Tomorrow here in Billings alone, we could have wind chills as low as 30 
below. So just, uh, you know, the next couple of days, stay indoors. If you have to go outdoors, limit your time and bundle up, bundle up, bundle up. Speaking of the winds, too, we've had some strong gusts near Ingermar. We had a gust over 50 down near uh, Sheridan uh, in, in Sheridan County. We had a gust near 70 just recently. So we are see, still see some of the stronger winds. It's trying to migrate off to our east. We just had a gust of 43 in Mile City. So that's not helping out with the cold conditions out there. Just brutally, brutally cold with those wind chills. There you go. Starting to see more coverage with that snow. We'll continue to see that as we go along this morning through at least lunchtime. Here's that Arctic air coming in from the north to drop those temperatures down over the course of the next few days. Again, Wednesday is going to be our coldest day of the week. And there you go. Several rounds of snow should be out by, you know, lunchtime, one o'clock here in Billings. We could see a quick uh, couple of inches off of this. It'll kick back up again on Wednesday morning, and then we're going to hold on to a chance coming and going all the way through Thursday. How much snowfall in total could we get? Well, uh, today, maybe a couple of inches all the way through the end of uh, Thursday into Friday. We could see maybe upwards of six here in Billings. 29 today in Livingston. We've got a high of 36 in Cody. Uh, of course, we've already hit those highs in some spots today, and it's only getting colder out there. And uh, here in Billings, our high tomorrow only going to get up to minus six for the actual temperature with wind chills 30 below. Brutal out there. Miller, it's World Hypnotism Day. Maybe you can hypnotize me and convince me to think that tomorrow it's going to be like 70 and sunny and sure. six degrees below. I because. can do that, or I can just give you a shot of whiskey and see what happens. Right <laughs> there, <you know? laughs> That'll always get you a little warm. <laughs> That'll warm you up. up. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It is brutal. It is uh, seriously, folks. If you can stay indoors tomorrow, do so. It's, it's just really going to be really bad out there. Guess I'll just stay home and not come to work. <laughs> can we kidding. do that? No. Have a good day. I will see you here tomorrow. I promise.